Hello and welcome to the Washington Week Backstory, where we talk with our panelists about the stories behind their stories. Tom Jelton of NPR has tackled the thorny issue of immigration in his new book, A Nation of Nations, A Great American Immigration Story. In it, he notes that America's legal immigrant population has tripled in 50 years, a transformation that has changed our national complexion, our economy, and our politics. Tell us, Tom, about how you chose to tell this story. Well, uh, October 3rd is the 50th anniversary of the 1965 Immigration Act, and that is the law that really changed America more than, probably more than any other law in the 20th century, because it opened America's doors to immigrants of color, and that, those doors had been closed before. U.S. immigration policy before 1965 was based on selecting immigrants according to their race or ancestry. I mean, it's hard to imagine that now, that that was yeah. actually our policy, but we had a policy that heavily favored Northern and Western Europeans, and if you were Asian or African or Middle Eastern, you had almost no chance to come. That policy changed in 1965, so now we've had 50 years of basically, and not an entirely open door, because there's numerical constraints, but 50 years where people had equal opportunities to immigrate to this country, and it did transform the country. It's important to draw the distinction for the purposes of people who want to read this book between I illegal immigration, right. people who come here against the laws, and, and legal immigration. Do you I make that line? I was completely focused on people who came here legally because America made a deliberate decision. The United States made a deliberate decision to bring in a more diverse immigrant population. So I'm looking at the consequences of that decision. There are huge and serious issues about people who come here outside the law, but I think it's it was time to really look at those people who waited their turn, took them a long time, came here, settled, uh, all within the context of legal immigration policy. Assimilation, is that the goal anymore? That's not the goal anymore. In fact, immigrants don't like the word assimilation because assimilation connotes a dominant culture that you sort of take as your own. Uh, integration is a much better term, even acculturation. Any immigrant from a non-European background who tried to become European, you just can't. You can't blend into some kind of white Euro-American society no matter how hard you try to do it. The only way that you're going to be integrated is if you sort of stay true to yourself, those parts of yourself that you don't have any control over, your language, your, your religion, your background. So it's, it's really a challenge of integration, not assimilation. A lot of our presidential candidates and politicians in general talk about assimilation, acculturation, immigration as a question of language right. and learn English and be an American. Is this something which is a goal on the parts of the... You know, one of the things I found, Gwen, is that immigrants want to learn English. And I have found very strong feelings about that they should, you know, the English only movement, we sort of think of as being kind of this... Anti-immigrant. Uh, Anti-immigrant movement. The immigrants that I met really believe strongly that everyone should learn English, and they do. There's a new study that just came out that shows that you know, whether you're talking about Hispanic immigrants who come here with r relatively low levels of education or people from Asia, they all learn English. By the third generation, they are all speaking English. I, I have to say it is a book which uh, it, it tells an undertold story in our immigration debate. Thank you very much, Tom Jones. You bet.